Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the newest record from Hoodie Allen called The Hype. So let's get into some territory that will be a touchy subject for some hip-hop heads. Pop rap. Yeah, I can already see some of you scoffing, but let's get real here. There have been artists who have played for lighter and sillier material since hip hop's very inception. Some who are even now held up among the greats, or at the very least, got some respect in the game. But don't get me wrong, I get the stigma. Because when people think of pop rap in the modern day mainstream, they tend to treat the music as utterly disposable songs by utterly disposable artists. And while they aren't exactly often wrong, you could make the argument that some of these acts can actually flow better than the endless stream of utter utterly forgettable and utterly interchangeable mumble rappers. Or they might actually have a turn of phrase that's interesting or funny or distinct. They might tell a story, something that an increasingly humorless and, again, interchangeable mainstream hip-hop scene tends to ignore. But when you also factor in the subset of white pop rap artists who tend to be using hip-hop just as a vehicle to make bad comedy, <coughs> little dicky, it doesn't help a stereotype of sanitized, often corny, and ultimately kind of forgettable acts that you might listen to briefly in college and then never again. So, okay, where does Hoodie Allen fall in? Well, kind of tough to say. You could definitely make the argument that his debut had its fair number of pop rap crossover singles, blending in Drake and Ed Sheeran-esque vocals of loose bragging and plenty of stealing your girlfriend, a cliche I don't like regardless of genre and hip-hop. But unlike so many of his peers, he remained entirely independent. He never signed to a major label, and his follow-up Happy Camper early last year grounded itself with a little bit more self-awareness and maturity, a little bit more groovy production. A style that pulled more from Chance the Rapper than anything like Ed Sheeran, he started to cultivate more of his own sound, and I like his voice. Now, of course, he can still slip toward corniness at spots, and some of his production choices and collaborators are definitely dubious in my books. Why he works with Black Bear, I'll never know. And considering he reached out himself for me to cover the hype, you know, I figured it was well enough to give it a chance. So what did I find here? Well, I'm not really sure what I can say about this, because if there is a part of me that feels like the hype is three steps forward and then two steps back, back. The rapping has only gotten better, his punchlines they feel sharper, and he got rid of some of the guest stars that annoyed the piss out of me. But he did so by going back to the production reminiscent of his debut with a lot of the content to match. And while I'm certain that will probably be exactly what the majority of his audience will prefer, I'm not sure it clicks for me as well as I would otherwise like. And while I'm not going to say that I've grown out of this style of hip-hop, because overall I did mostly kind of enjoy the album, I'm starting to expect a little bit more to Hoodie Allen than what I got with this at this point of his career. Most because I know he's capable of getting there. He's got the skills. I just want to see the ambition. And I say that because for the most part, I like this guy as a performer. As a rapper, he consistently is able to string his bars and rhymes together pretty well. Although he does indulge in the hashtag rap more than I otherwise would like, making me wish that more of his punchlines didn't just feel like extended pop culture references than hard-hitting content. And unlike most rappers, you know, he's actually got a halfway decent Pipes is a singer, plenty capable of handling his own hooks on songs like Sushi and Know It All and Believe and Fakin. Hell, his hook is easily the best part on that last song. And that's kind of the thing. Even if his content is lightweight, and it is, believe me, we're gonna get into that, his biggest strength is a knack for melody and making tunes that go down pretty easy that's honestly more radio-friendly than you would expect. A bit reminiscent of Logic's old taste for New York-style swagger, but a little bit looser, more focused on the party and keeping things easy. Now, granted, the more I did listen through this record, his delivery did feel a tad one-dimensional. Generally agreeable, but kind of broadly sketched. And it's no surprise that Wale is actually a decent fit on the single track inspired song Fakin, or that he teamed up with the pop punk group State Champs for a song to fuse in a few rap verses for a pop punk track and it's surprisingly tolerable, even if it's a little bit lacking in the muscle in production. Now that said, outside of those two outliers, the production and instrumentation tends to fall towards a very modern brand of pop that can't help but feel a little bit sanitized to me. Blocky beats in the low end with clap percussion or trap snares, acoustic guitars, pianos or organ anchoring the melody, and maybe some hints of horns or synthesizer if things are going to get a little bit feisty. But there is a part of me that not only thinks this feels oddly safe for him, but also that this is a bit of a regression for Hoodie Allen, going back to more of the sounds of his debut. He's a good enough rapper to ride some of the more complex grooves that anchored Happy Camper, and yet here? Okay, while some of the bluesier tones on Know It All or Something Dangerous, they're likable, they got a surprising amount of organic depth to them, it's leaning into retro pop soul tropes that can feel a little basic, a little interchangeable from song to song 
lacking the sharper refinement and the smoother bass lines the more hip-hop leaning side of that last project which i gotta admit i like that production more i'd almost say here it's a little bit more megan trainer-esque especially with the tendency to drop into a hollowed out bassy segment for the second verses but you know what thankfully hoodie allen's got enough charisma and good tone to get back to the hooks and the hooks are indeed the best part of this album but this is where we have to talk about the content and look i got a pretty high tolerance for corny punchlines and pop culture references i mean i review country music for god's sakes and while the hype is stuffed nearly to the brim with all of that on nearly every song including a few tom cruise and 21 pilots lines that are borderline cringe worthy my issue with this project runs a little deeper namely that the hype can feel pretty shallow as a whole i mean let's face it the majority of the songs here either focus on flexing probably yields the best results with believe and on the broad goofiness of sushi probably my favorite song here or on relationships that on uh, this tone on this record cannot but feel paper thin and sure some of these songs if they're played a little bit lighter that can kind of work but it's almost like there aren't enough jokes or actual storytelling to really flesh out the songs and make them feel distinct especially when we get a fair few breakup songs that really don't engage much with the emotions of the situation in content or delivery at least that what you would expect in reality and that doesn't really help the love songs feel any more sincere either it just all feels kind of flimsy and granted it's at least a consistent tone on the album if it's gonna be content to bounce from girl to girl at least he's kind of honest about that but here's the thing when you have love songs like all for me or the desire to reconcile with an ex on mad they feel remarkably clingy and following the former song with Fakin, where he's taking the girl's phone it's not a great lyrical or sequencing choice on the record and yet later on the album when this girl wants more of a commitment a rock of some kind he flies her to boulder colorado on play the field or outright just leaves her in an urban outfitters and the relationship sputtering out on heartbreak but by doing this he makes it harder to buy into the love songs and without any sense of consequences for these stories or any deeper narrative tying any of this together it becomes harder for me to care one way or the other about him or his partners especially when within the song the story seems to kind of change and he's still entirely too focused on bragging and stealing other guys girlfriends but you know what as a whole again as a rapper hoodie allen's technique is better than ever and again i like this guy's voice good hooks do redeem a lot of this project for me and i can at least accept that it's trying to stay in a lightweight vein here and bouncy pop rap but at the same time i feel like hoodie allen is falling back into old tones and content that doesn't really do him a lot of favors in the long term or hold my interest for very long either now for what it's trying to do it's agreeable enough i can see this working for his audience but again i get the feeling that a little bit more ambition could go a long way to making these projects connect more deeply have a little bit more pathos to them as such for me this is a light six out of ten and a recommendation but really only for fans of this style of pop rap and hoodie allen stands i mean this album might have flair to it but i can imagine as the hype fades so will some of that color just saying so yeah thanks a lot for watching like to like and subscribe and more than grateful don't really have a lot to say about this but hey if you're into this brand of pop rap and i know there is an audience for it have fun if you have if you're absolutely allergic to pop rap stay away from this because you will not dig this at all it's not your scene but if you want to buy the record, link's in the description below. And I got the poll up there, so if you guys have any opinions on how wrong I am, there's your opportunity to tell me. Now, if you guys want to get involved in my scheduling process, the link to my Patreon is right over there, where three times a week you guys get to vote on my schedule, and once a week for the higher tier contributors, you get to add albums, movies, or even a top 10 list to that schedule. I got a top 10 list in the pipeline, might save that for 30,000, you never know. So, till then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time. Sushi, everybody know me why the hell you introduced